This is another true or false question, and it's true or false. Genetic therapies offer a potential cure for CF. Um, and there's a I don't know option as well for, for people who are unsure. So this one has a very mixed response. 36% uh, have answered true and another 36% have answered false and 29% have answered I don't know. Um, and this is uh, quite an interesting uh, question and answer, I think. So, Jane, um, I wonder if you would be willing to reflect on this. Well, I absolutely love questions that get a mixed response like this because uh, they, they're, they're really interesting to talk about. Um, I think the first thing I'd say is that I suspect different people have different definitions of the word cure. And um, I didn't obviously answer the question, but had I answered the question, my own personal view is that the real meaning of a word cure is you go in for some treatment and you leave and you don't have that disease anymore. Um, so for example, someone who's had a bone marrow transplant for you know, an untreatable um, genetic disease and, and leaves and uh, they don't have that disease anymore. Um, for me, I think all of the cystic fibrosis treatments that are around at the moment, I, I wouldn't use that word cure, even for the very highly effective modulators. Um, in the case of, of the drugs, for example, although they do address multiple different parts of the body, and, and one could almost say almost all parts of the body, if you decide to stop taking them, then at some point the disease is still there and it comes back and the symptoms will come back. Um, so they are certainly not a cure. They need to be given long term and maintained. And I think there is a potentially slightly different issue about the genetic therapies. Um, so firstly, Jamie did a fantastic job of explaining the different types of genetic therapies. If we go through them, perhaps um, individually, because I think there are different issues related to this use of the word cure, um, the messenger RNA therapies. So, so the blueprint replacement, if you like. Um, those blueprints don't last very long. You know, you expose them to sunlight and they fade or something, but they just don't keep working. So you need to really give messenger RNA very frequently, possibly several times a week or even daily. And that to me underlies the, probably the wrong term in terms of using cure. Um, there are some longer lasting genetic approaches, which would include actually inserting DNA in some cases into the genetic makeup of the person. And those ones could last for very, very much longer. And we don't yet know because they haven't been in humans. Um, but in some of those approaches in animal models have lasted for, for example, for the lifetime of a mouse, which is two years. So one could say, oh, well, maybe you'd be happy to call that a cure. The problem I think in terms of the use of that word is that they are administered directly to the air airways, so, so the lungs. And I think that the best we're going to achieve with those, therefore, is to get improvement in the lung consequences of cystic fibrosis. Um, but of course, as everyone on the call knows, there are multiple different organs involved also. Um, and the current, um, you know, the current way we, in which we administer those treatments won't be able to address the gut or the pancreas or the liver or any of those other um, organs which are affected in people with CF. So I think that's the other reason why personally I don't use the word cure. I think it potentially raises the bar very, very high in terms of expectations. And I think as we've seen with the modulators, we can achieve fantastic impacts and really change people's quality and quantity of life without resorting to the use of the word cure. Now, the one exception that I think you could pull me up on this is that Jamie mentioned gene editing and that is um, getting some way of repairing and actually changing the genetic makeup of the cells. Um, this is a long way off in my opinion. Um, there are attempts to do this in the lungs. One could look into the future and say if that works and if it's safe might people do something like this for example to a woman who's pregnant and knows that she is carrying um, a fetus who's affected with cystic fibrosis. I, I think I couldn't rule that out happening at some point in the future, but I don't think we are anywhere near it at the moment. Um, and for me, context in which I might think actually the use of the word cure was appropriate. So um, I think the correct answer is I don't think that it 
some of the massive impacts that we possibly could have. Um, and many of the trials and the approaches that are around at the moment um, are benchmarking themselves against the sort of impacts that are achieved with CAPTRIO in the lung and are hoping to gain um, benefits to that sort of magnitude. Now, time will tell, obviously, we need the trial data to be able to understand whether that is going to be the case. Um, but I think there's an enormous amount of optimism and fantastic energy in the field at the moment. We've all just come back from the European CF conference, and I've never been to a conference where there was quite so much talk about genetic therapies. Um, so there's certainly a huge momentum in there and a lot of focus on this subgroup of people who can't currently benefit from the new drugs that we've got available to us. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Jane.